Okay. We're good to go. We are good to go. We are ready to dive into another Friday morning mailbag live Q&A session. Uh, I am very excited to be here with you guys this morning. So some phenomenal questions that I received over the course of the last week or so. Really good ones, actually. Really good ones. And we have some phenomenal material to dive into today. So these uh, these live Q&A sessions, my friends, are really valuable. You know, I, I hope that everybody gets that, you know, I come on here, I pop on here, and, and I want to give you my absolute best. I want to give you my absolute best wisdom, my best experiences that I've been able to find, that I've been able to acquire through my last 15 years of being an entrepreneur and, you know, doing upwards well over, um, what is it now? I think it was 13, 14 million dollars in revenue um, in my in my career so far in small business. So these are what I'm bringing to the table. These are the skill sets that it requires as a small business owner to really accelerate, to grow, to take that next big leap. And uh, to me, it's a gift for you. That's how I see these live Q and A sessions. I see these live Q and A sessions as a gift from me to you. Uh, in hopes, you know what, in hopes you guys that you find what myself and what my company does really valuable and you go, you know what, I would love to have these guys as a part of my team. That's that's the premise of this, is to deliver great value and to be fully transparent, you know, to eventually say, you know what, Michael and his team sound like they really know what they're doing. Like they, I can see how valuable and powerful they are. I'd love to have them working for my company. That's the reason that I do these, you know. In fact, one of our questions today is about lead magnets. And one of the best lead magnets out there is building a community. Just building a community, whether it's through your content on Facebook, like we're doing this Facebook group, through it's um, through developing a community on a different social media platform, be that Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever it is. You know, one of the big big ways of attracting people to you magnetically drawing you lead that's what a lead magnet is is magnetically drawing you leads is to build a great community and that's my goal here with the marketing wizards inner circle which you which you are a part of so without further ado let's jump into the questions because there are uh, there are a couple of really 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 good ones so i'm, I'm gonna start off with uh with a big banger here so uh, a friend of mine uh, asked me to elaborate why I love the hourglass so much, why I use the hourglass image in what it is that I do. So I want to jump, jump into that. Like, what's the purpose of the hourglass, right? What is the purpose of this? Well, you're going to hear out there a lot of people talk about sales funnels. A lot of people talk about the idea of having a funnel, but to me, a funnel is open on the bottom and that's the risk. See, the greatest achievement that I've been able to make from the marketing perspective in my world is that when I acquire a client, be that in my marketing company or be that for my pet business, I often don't lose them. I mean, things happen, of course. But to me, once you acquire a client, once they come into your world, part of your job as an entrepreneur is to continue to provide solutions for the next problem that they're going to face. So I look at it as an hourglass. I say, once I get a grain of sand come into the top, right? Once I get a client to come into my world or a prospect to come into my world, I want to do my utmost. I want to do my best to nurture, provide, give, secure that client or that prospect as a customer, which as you guys know, to me, this is all top of the process here. This is all attraction, nurture, right? Enhance the experience with your client. The way I look at it right here is, to me, the hourglass is all about attraction, right? At the top, nurture, offer, sale, guide, uh, deliver, Wow, refer. Right? That's the seven stages to me of the hourglass marketing system. So the whole point of this is 
when uh, David's question was, why do I love using the hourglass? Because once a grain of sand passes through, once you attract a prospect into your world, you nurture that prospect to then make them an offer to then sell them on what it is, the transformation that you're going to provide for them, that, that experience, to then take them into the guiding them, the wowing them, and then I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, don't sneeze. <laughs> oh, these are lives, everybody. <laughs> Needed to sneeze. Okay, to then take them through the guiding process, through the wow process, and then through the referral or the next offer. Ultimately, what you're doing then is you're just flipping the hour. And then they go through the process again. You make them, they refer, like if uh, I gave the example to a client the other day, if you sell pools, right, you're obviously not going to sell a pool to me every year. But if you sell me a pool and you, the experience is tremendous, then I'm going to refer other clients to you. Then if you say, hey, do you know anybody else, right? might be interested in the pool, that type of thing. I'm gonna refer you. I'm gonna make reviews or I'm gonna put a review up of your company. That's a refer, And that leads to the next sale. So the reason I love the hourglass is because the toughest thing to do in business is acquire clients, right? The, the world today is so busy. There's so much going on. The attention, right? The focus of people is so fractured that getting them to pay attention long enough to actually nurture and do everything else, that's a huge process. That's a big deal. And it's its a big challenge to, to grow an audience and to grow a business. Now, a lot of people have done it, but ultimately to monetize it and turn it into, you know, dollars in the bank and value and whatever you can do with that, that's the tough part. So why, once you acquire, you do all this work to acquire an actual person that says yes to a sale, why would you just drop them out of a funnel? Poof, they're gone. I do that, right? Why not put them into an hourglass where they stay in your community, they stay a part of your network, they stay a part of your business, and you simply flip the hourglass and you take them through either a new process or you use them to attract another member or another grain of sand into your hourglass. That's how I see it. That's why I use it. To me, this is a valuable lesson and it changed things for me profoundly when I was really developing the marketing strategy for my brick and mortar company because the stat is that it turns out it is seven times more expensive to acquire a new customer than it is to simply sell to an existing one. Seven times. So think about that on scale. If you have a $50,000 budget and it costs you seven times the value to acquire a new customer versus an just taking an existing one and selling them something new or selling the same service again, think of how much more expensive, how much less you can grow your revenue if you're focused on acquiring new clients all the time. So it's a, it makes a big huge difference. So great question, David. That is why my friend, I love the hourglass analogy. Um, okay. <clears throat> so Chris, uh, this was inside our Facebook group. I had asked a question and she answered, or I'd asked questions. She asked, or yes, she answered. <laughs> so Chris Dyer, you asked the question or basically said, what are one of the challenges you have is how to develop a great lead magnet, right? A great lead magnet. And, and what's the process of putting that lead magnet into play for yourself? So, uh, it's a long answer, Chris, but I'm going to give you some bullet points here on the road to the answer, okay? So how to implement the lead magnet and where to put it and all that stuff, that's a that's a broader question and it requires a deeper dive into who's your ideal client, where do they hang out, uh, what's your, how tech savvy are you, what's your skill system, and of course, what the actual lead magnet is. That makes a huge difference. So to answer Chris's question as best as I possibly could, what I did was I listed out my 10 favorite and statistically proven top lead magnets. So these are the things that in the marketplace tend to do the best as far as drawing you leads, okay? Drawing actual interest and eyeballs on what you have to offer. And these aren't in any particular order, although they kind of are in my favorite order as it were. But they, these are 10 things, okay? First of all, you can do a quiz. People love 
giving their information, their contact info to do a quiz that find that reveals something about themselves, right? My wife is constantly doing these things online. The Harry Potter quiz, the Marvel superhero quiz, the uh, what type of dog are you quiz, the, um, you know, I'm a sucker for, you know, what uh, what type of, uh, good morning, Shanna, what type of uh, weight loss program is best for you in fitness, right? What type of, um, what type of body uh, shape are you? Lately, I've been working out, so that's part of my, my psyche. Um, you know, where are you? I just finished working on a quiz for one of our clients here, Bold Publishing. And so her quiz is all about what's keeping you from publishing your book. And you go through the quiz and it's gonna give you an answer as to what it is that's preventing you from publishing the book. So quizzes are great and I love them because they're highly interactive. They give you insight into your prospect and the prospect is revealing something about themselves and they're normally fun. If you do a great quiz, chances are they're fun and engaging and people love that stuff. Okay, so number one, quiz. Number two, free trials. Free trials are all over the place. Uh, uh, quick thing, if you guys are watching the, the uh, live right now, just put a one in the comment section, that would be great. Or just give me a thumbs up in the comment section. If you're watching the replay of this, uh, put a two in the comment section, just so I know which people are watching. That would be great. Uh, so number two, free trials. People love free trials and stuff. Okay, uh, test this product out for um, for 30 days, right? Uh, do uh, Go to the gym. Hey, Glenn, uh, go to the gym. You know, free trial at the gym, that type of thing. So free trials are a great way of getting people to engage your product or your service at, at basically no cost, no risk to them, but you get their contact information. You continue to market to them. So very powerful. Free trials are great. Toolkits. <clears throat> a toolkit is fabulous. If you can take what you do and turn it into a mini toolkit for somebody, and I'm also talking an info product style toolkit here that doesn't have any cost of deliveries, deliverables for you, but people love a toolkit. You know, here's our how to write a book in 30 days toolkit. It's basically like a mini course. It's almost like a mini workshop process that you give away some of those things. And those are very powerful. Um, number four is an assessment. So the difference between this and a quiz is an assessment is more along the lines of a, I have these particular problems and I work through this digital assessment or I do a one-on-one -on -one assessment with somebody. Um, you know, for example, we do a, for time marketing, we do a strategy session, which is essentially an assessment. Where is your business at? Where would you love it to be? And we do a 45 minute free strategy session for anybody that wants one, right? That's our lead magnet very powerful, very effective, okay? So an assessment is a great thing. Or you can do a digital product assessment, or you can even do like a survey style assessment. So these are more mass market digital products that you can put into play. Uh, number five is a cheat sheet. Number five, cheat sheet. Cheat sheets are awesome. If you're an expert in something, can you distill down your expertise into some bullet point of cheat sheets that you can give to somebody and that helps them get to where they'd love to go faster? Okay, cheat sheets are great. A digital course. Just give away a digital course if you have access to or you've created a digital course. Sometimes if you have a bigger item that you wanna sell, right? Or a larger version of that type of course. So for example, um, if you wanted to, you know, I have a, an ebook that, that I have called uh, 77 Productivity Shortcuts for Busy Entrepreneurs. If I had a digital course that was based on that book, right? I could give away that course, not just the book. So those are really, really valuable and effective things because the digital course provides an exorbitant amount of value from a person's perspective versus how much time and effort it might take from you because it's a self-development or it's a self-done course, right? Software. Uh, some of you have access to software. Some of you have access to uh, different online tools, digital tools that you can give away for free that acquires someone's contact information. Those are very effective. Uh, templates. If you have a series of templates, one of the big things these days is chat GPT templates or just AI bot templates in general. Here as, and you might see them as, here's a series of prompts. Essentially that's a template. You're giving them a series of different prompts or templates and I'm seeing these all over the place right now. How to effectively use AI, use my templates. And they're going to give you their template, right? Their cheat sheet and you can put that to use for yourself and that gives them your contact info and so on and so on and so on. Um, 
Number eight, or number nine, I should say, discounts or promotions. Sign up for this, right, and get $50 off. Sign up for this, <coughs> pardon me, and get um, you know 40% off your next order. So those are also a really, really powerful, and very effective way that a lot of e-commerce businesses generate leads is by just giving that lead something that they want in the moment. You know, you ever been to one of those websites <coughs> where you're looking at something, and as you go to leave, there's a pop-up that comes, boop, that says, hey, do you want 50% off this product or get this product for 75% off? Have you experienced this? Type of, you know, guys who are watching here live, but give me a thumbs up if you ever had one of those experiences. Okay, you're online, you're on the page, you're about to leave and suddenly this pop-up shows up that says, hey, would you like this product for 50% off? Or if you buy two of these today, I'll give you one for free. Right, you ever had that experience? I'm watching my, uh, my comment section here, right? We see this all the time. That's a great way of acquiring someone's contact information because even if they sign up for that coupon right there i think the stat was somewhere between 70 80 percent of people use the coupon right away but there's also a, a fair chunk 25 percent there that take the coupon put it in their email inbox and they might use it later that's acquiring a prospect right you're finally um uh, yeah there you go order your first custom post art and get a free framing perfect glenn there you go there's a there's a nice little little uh, lead magnet promotion you can do. So those are great. And then the last one I wanna to touch on is a resource list or a database. So these are something that your company has that you are willing to give to somebody else, right? So these are my, you know, I could, I could possibly say something along the lines of, here are the top 10 websites that I use for my marketing research. You know, we, we're a really good marketing company. We create beautiful marketing that gets great results. Would you like to know where my secret resources are, where I go to get my greatest stats? I know exactly what's gonna happen in the marketing world. Would you love to know who it is that I follow and what, what research I do? Would you like to know that? Here's my resource list. Right, so your a resource list or a database basically um, illustrates your knowledge, your area of expertise, and quite often ingratiates somebody to you completely. Like, oh my gosh, this person's an expert and they're gonna give me the inside scoop. You know, Glenn, you're a beautiful artist. You might say, hey, if you've ever wanted, you know, would you love to know what the, my, my favorite top art softwares are and exactly where I go to get my best art supplies? There are people that might want to learn as an artist, right? And they'd be really, really fast in learning. So it's a long answer to Chris's, to Chris's question about lead magnets, but ultimately that's a whole list of them. So I'll go over them over. A quiz, a um, sorry, a quiz, a free trial, a toolkit, an assessment, a cheat sheet, a digital course, a software product, templates, discounts or promotions, and finally a resource list or a database. So those are ten right there. Really cool lead magnets that I have found to be the most effective. Okay. Now, with that in mind, a tip about building lead magnets. Your lead magnet needs to solve one single problem and solve it well. Your lead magnet needs to solve one single problem and sell it well. So Glenn, if you want to offer a promotion for your custom, like for the framing, what problem does that solve for your real estate agent? Solves them time, right? Because now they don't have to frame it solves them a money challenge because now they don't have to pay for it, right? But also it could be, you know, it's it's very, very likely that it solves maybe a um, a branding problem, right? Or something along those lines so that they look really good in the customer's eyes. So those are valuable elements that you can use that, um, that work great. They work really, really well. Okay, the other thing is that your lead magnet should create a hunger. Your lead magnet should create a desire for your greater product or greater service. If you have a really good lead magnet, it should create a hunger for that thing. Okay? It should create that. So Glenn, if I was in your shoes and I wanted to market to real estate agents, I might actually put together a quick report, like a little... Um, like a cheat sheet on here are the top five things that real estate agents are using as gifts 
and make sure that your custom like like art that's unique to that client is a part of that list. Right? Then you're giving something of value to the real estate agent while at the same time holding up your product is going, look, this is one of the most unique and valuable things you can do because people love their homes and now they can take that home with them in this beautiful piece of art. Something like that, right? Okay, uh, I hope that is valuable to you guys. I hope that helps frame up some lead magnets, ideas and concepts. Uh, I'm working on a lead magnet course actually called the Golden Lead Machine. And um, that course will be coming up pretty soon. And we'll go deeper into that and how to build them and all those types of things. So if you wanna find out about that, uh, stay tuned. Okay, uh, go to more questions here. What's my, <laughs> this is always funny. Okay, so uh, one of my clients here, uh, one of the members I should say of our community, Lisa, she said, what is my favorite food? All right. <laughs> Lisa, oh gosh, I have a few, but ultimately my favorite food, I say it's pizza. I love pizza. I, I, I can't get enough of it. Pizza doesn't always like me, but um, I love pizza. Now, as I get older, pizza's really not liking me as much, but uh, Lisa, to answer your question, which is great. Thank you for the great food, what my favorite food is question. It's pizza. I, I love pizza. Love it. I also, I, it's from an, like a, an ethnic food perspective, like what type of food do I like? Uh, I'm a huge fan of Indian food. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, okay, Lisa also asked another question here is, how do I stand out as a life coach? Okay. How do you stand out as a life coach? Um, <clears throat> So uh, in the comment section here, while we're doing this live, is this a problem that you guys have sometimes is how to, how to stand out in the marketplace, like how to make yourselves unique and how to, how to really be different than other people. So I uh, just put a yes in the comment section. If that's a challenge that you have to be facing, right? If that's a challenge you happen to be facing, if you feel that way, that you're, you're struggling sometimes to be, you know, unique and different in the marketplace. Hello, Paula. Shanna says, yes. Okay, got it, yep. Paula, is this a challenge that you're having? You know, Lisa asked this question about how do you stand out as a life coach? Paula, is this a challenge that you're having? Like standing out in the marketplace, making yourself unique and differentiating yourself from other people. Is this, is this a challenge that you might be facing as well, Paula? Yeah, okay. I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with. And I totally get it. Because there's a lot of marketing being done. There's a lot of marketing being done. So we're seeing all of what all these other people are doing. Right? We're seeing a lot of it. Have you ever felt that way, you guys, that you're looking out at social media and you're watching YouTube or you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're behaving, you're just going in life and you're doing your thing and you're just bombarded with branding and messages, right? Uh, I would like to brand me and my business. Yeah, of course, Paul. But uh, like, do you get, you get what I'm saying? Like, there's just a lot of branding out there, right? So, so give me a heart or a like in the, in the chat here, guys, if you feel that way. You see a lot of this marketing, like it's constant, right? I know, I see it all the time. Every time I hop on social media, this person's ads, that person's ads. You know, I get on YouTube and it's just constant. Uh, clearly I don't pay for that YouTube like premium subscription that has no ads. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to stand out, I'm going to, I'm going to say something and uh, this is a bit of a, um, it's not a contradiction, but it's a different way of answering Lisa's question. <clears throat> I would spend a lot more time creating rather than consuming. As a fundamental principle, if you want to stand out and be unique in the marketplace, one of the first things I would do is switch your mind from the idea and switch the habit, more importantly, the habit of consuming content to creating content consuming marketing and branding and messaging to creating marketing and branding and messaging. Okay, 
start to make that shift. Because what will start to happen is through practice, through the art of doing, through implementation, you will start to find your voice, Lisa, and anybody else who's watching here, right? You'll start to find your voice. Paula, you're going to find your voice. Shanna, Glenn, you guys will find your voices, your way of framing something, your way of talking about something, your way of discussing something, your way of delivering the value and the transformation that your prospects and subsequently clients are craving. Your way of doing it. And it's not to say that you shouldn't consume because we've got to be aware of what's going on. But we can get so wrapped up in consumption that we get paralyzed because we think all the seats are taken. Can't we? Sometimes the marketing world, and especially when you're in the coaching industry, Lisa, is you feel like it's a it's a like it's um, a game of musical chairs. And by the end of the music, you're so busy watching what's going on, there's no freaking seat for you anymore. You know, you've, you've lost the fucking opportunity because you've been so busy watching this. And I, I understand, I can empathize because that's exactly where I was. And I still have to fight that all the time. It's called Michael, get back into creation mode, get back into delivering value and helping somebody rather than just watching what other people are doing. By a show of thumbs up in the in the, the chat here, does that make sense to everybody? Is is my I have another answer for Lisa as well to build on this, but does that make sense to you guys? Let me know if that works. Give me some parts in here if that works, you guys, because I think a lot of us get trapped there. <clears throat> yes, but no, Shanna says. Okay. Okay. So Shanna, if, if you can, uh, what do you mean with the no part? What's what part of the, so the yes, but no. So what is, what is it you're struggling with on that one, Shanna? Hmm. Yes, Shad, I mean, you have a very unique product. Like, shad has got a really cool service. So that might not be standing out in the marketplace from a, an, a, a, a branding perspective might not be as difficult for her. Yeah, Paul, you're, you're right. You need to be innovative. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify it, though. So to answer Lisa's question to get into creation mode, like start delivering value. One of the things that I know is that when we're in compare-itis mode, when we're so busy comparing ourselves to other people, it's really hard. It's really hard. So we have to get out of that mode and get into creation and get into to delivery. You know, this particular Facebook group, you guys is at what, 115 members or so right now? I'd love it to be at 115,000, but that's not where I'm at. I just need to show up and deliver value to where we are right now. So I can't get into the compare itis game. And I, I, I want to do my best not to try, not to fall into that trap because I hope that I'm delivering really great value to you guys. That's my whole premise. And whether there's 50 of you, 150 of you, 150,000 of you, it doesn't really matter yet, to me, right? So that's what I'm in the middle of. But the next stage to this, Lisa, to, to really answer your question is make your offer unique. Make what you do, the transformation that people experience from you, unique and different and shift it, right? What is the unique story and narrative that you bring to the table as a life coach that's going to be distinctly different than what other people are doing? And a big part of that is carving into your own personal story. Why are you here? Why are you life coaching? What has brought you to this point, right? Um, and what is, is putting you in, that, in this place to be able to uniquely deliver value to the person that you want to coach? And when you get clear about that story, how your mess has become your message, as we've all heard that before, how you carved out this unique take on what it is that you do, then your ideal client, the person who you love to serve, will start to get clearer and clearer and clearer. 
So that's that's really the way to do this, you guys, is to get into creation mode and get really hyper-focused on how your story and your narrative give you a unique and different take on how to deliver the, the program and deliver the results that it is that you promise. So any quick questions about that in the comment section, you guys. No, I'll get some thumbs up. Shanna says she's just not a big consumer. Okay, totally fair. I, I get that completely, which is great. It's great. I mean, sometimes we can miss some trends here and there um, that we could jump on top of because they resonate with our community and who we serve. But ultimately, um, yeah, when you're not a big, huge consumer, Shanna, that's, that's not a bad thing. Right? Okay, cool. All right, you guys. <clears throat> so really quickly, before we wrap things up here with the q and I was asked a great question. Um, great advice, Michael. Thank you, Paula. I love that you love it. Um, so uh, a prospect asked me, very good question. You know, he's at, he wants to work with my company. So him and I are kind of interviewing each other to see if it's a good fit. So Kamlesh asked me, uh, what was my best ever marketing campaign? And so my best ever marketing campaign is, uh, is actually one, it's, what's funny about it is that the campaign is so good that I actually can't run it very often, right? So to be, I have other marketing campaigns that I'm running on a regular basis that provide for my brick and mortar business and provide for my marketing company. But this particular campaign, I'm going to pull it out of the ether and not because it's one that uh, I can run on a regular basis. Some people would say, oh, well, then it's not the best marketing campaign. This, to me, this one was is really great. So uh, I'll see you really quickly here, you guys. This is terrible. While I'm on, uh, on the call with you, can I actually pull up the image? We'll see if I've got it on the slide. So I put a marketing campaign together and I've been able to run it um, about 12 times, 11 or 12 times over the last um, four years since I started. No, five years, five years. Ago. So I can only turn it on for about um, normally three or four days because it works so effectively. How would that be, you guys, that you have a marketing campaign that's so good that when you turn it on, it pours clients into your business like a faucet into the bathtub and the bathtub fills almost instantaneously and you got to turn it off. Wouldn't that be amazing? How would that feel? By a show of thumbs up in the um, in the chat here uh, on the live, how would that feel to have that, you guys, popping into your system, right? Just happening and, and really, really making some amazing things. Wouldn't that be amazing? Uh, so let me see here. Do I have it on my laptop? I don't think I do. You know what? I'll post a picture of it into the group, you guys. I'll post a picture of it into the Marketing Wizards Inner Circle Facebook group um, of what this marketing campaign is. So what it is, is I give away for my dog grooming salon, my brick and mortar business, 50 half price dog grooming coupons. And in my, my Facebook ad targeting for this particular campaign, so this is a Facebook ads campaign, my Facebook ad targeting, I target for or um, a lookalike audience of those who like my Facebook page. So not the people who are actually on my page, not the people who know my business, but a lookalike audience. And I, I give away 50 half price salon coupons. Okay, so this is 50 brand new clients. And we literally fill our salon space with 50 brand new people within a matter of three or four days. Sometimes it's actually less than two days. I've run the campaign where 48 hours later, I have to turn it off because the 50 coupons are gone. Like the Facebook ad literally gets just into learning mode and all, all the coupons are gone. Now, can you imagine how powerful that is, how great that is for a company to know that at the drop of a hat, you can acquire 50 new customers for about 30 bucks through Facebook ads in a matter of two or three days. Isn't that amazing? Bang, bang, bang. Right now, ad cost has gone up a little bit, so I haven't run the ad in about four months time, so it might have gone up from 30, but whatever. The fact is, is I acquired 50 new clients. We keep almost all of them. 
And so you might say, oh, well, you know, you're giving away a huge thing. Yeah, where well, it's a great offer. So here's what makes the campaign good. It's got great imagery. So I'll show that in the Facebook group. You'll see it. It's a hilarious image. It's like a, um, a Boston Terrier with a shower cap on. It's vibrant colors, really grabs it. It's got great images. It's got a great offer. Get your dog groomed for half price. You know, so that's a $40, $50 savings for most people. It's got a time limiter. So they have to use the coupon within a certain amount of time. And once, and then it's got a quantity. So once the 50 year gone, the 50 year gone. So you've got all the powerful elements of a great campaign all at work. Attention, great offer, limited availability, and, um, and something people really, really want. Like they can save money on this. Okay, so those are all the elements of the great offer. And the fact is, is those 50 people, when they come back approximately every six to eight weeks, you now multiply that out. I acquire the client. Remember, Hourglass Marketing System. I acquire the client with a Facebook ad up here. They immediately go to offer and they immediately go down here to the sale point. They book, okay? They buy, and then we del we guide them through. Here's what our process is. You're gonna fill this paperwork. We're gonna do this job for you. We wow them with a really great groom. And then what do they do? They get on our Facebook page. They get on our reviews. They say, this is really great. I've already booked my next appointment, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we give them a promotion and offer to book their next appointment for another $20 off. So they say, yes. So now my 50 acquired clients comes back again. And all I do is then I flip this over again. And how many times can I fill this? My grooming room now is booked out two to three weeks in advance for our salon because we ran this campaign. Now, over the last four and a half to five years that I've been running this campaign, I did the math on this. This one particular campaign has cost me, and this is without going into detail about resources and time and stuff like that, but in Facebook ad cost, okay, it's cost me around $700. It's been valued in revenue-wise at nearly $450,000 in sales. $700 ad spend, $450,000 in customer spend. Those two numbers, like they're not even on the same planet, those two numbers. And that's why I chose that one as my favorite, my best campaign, right? That particular campaign has provided almost 20% of our grooming room revenue over the last few years because of the client coming in and then continuing to come back and come back. That's what great marketing can do. So that was the campaign that I pulled out from my uh, imagination the moment I was talking to Kamrash. But when you have great marketing, you guys, and, and these aren't results that everybody can get. I'm not saying this, but what I'm saying is that great marketing is what fills your company to the brim. It's what brings customers to you. It's what ingratiates them. It's what drives them to continue to go through your hourglass process. So if you're looking to make an incredible impact in your community, then I encourage you, flesh out your branding, flesh out your message, get great at your marketing, because that's where the people that you would love to help lie. You got to go digging for them and they're in your marketing. Okay. By a show of thumbs up in the chat box for people watching here right now on the live. Was that helpful? Was that valuable, you guys? Did we get some good stuff out of that? Perfect. Okay, you guys, you guys, you owe it to your customers to get great at marketing so that you can really, really, really rock what it is that you're doing and help more people. You owe it to them. You owe it to your family and your friends for building an abundance and a wealth and a mindset of success. You owe it to them for that. You owe it to yourself for those things, but you also owe it to your clients, man. You have a great offer. You transform people's lives. So stop being a coward. Get out there, get courageous, do amazing things, enchant your audience, make magic happen. So uh, just before I wrap things up here, I always do ask, are there any other questions from my live audience today about uh, their marketing, about their sales, about their business evolution? Anything that's, that's itching at the back of your brain that I can tackle for you today? Anything that I could be of value to you today? 
How can I help you today? If you have a question, just type it in the comment section there. And if you don't, that's cool. Just give me a thumbs up in there if you're all good. Like if you can take what we talked about today and put it to use for yourself, just give me a give me a good old thumbs up. Sorry, as I'm watching over here. Creating community engagement. Oh, Shanna, that's a great question. So how do you do that? Are networking groups valuable? Okay, so we got some questions. That's good. So <laughs> It's so funny. Glenn and I know each other through a marketing group or a networking group. So he always asks networking questions. You're hilarious. Um, networking groups. Oh, man. Yes, they are very valuable, Glenn. In fact, most of my um, most of my business comes from networking. You know, most of it comes from networking. Like, and a lot, not, I shouldn't say that. I would suppose it's probably pretty 50-50 right now. Of the many, many clients that we've helped, a lot of them I know have met in person through networking events or just events in general. Um, and then probably the other half of I've attracted to my business through online marketing tools and, and online marketing campaigns and then nurtured them. But they almost all get into some sort of networking community with me, be it here in the Facebook group or somewhere else. So yes, networking is very valuable. In your particular place, Glenn, I would spend as much time as I possibly could networking with actual real estate agents, though, because they're the customer that you want to serve. Um, okay, so creating community engagement on a large community project. You know what, Shanna? That's one of those things where you have to really, I think, solicit help from the community itself. There's nothing really one person does to create a massive amount of engagement. It becomes a culture of the community itself, whether it engages or not. So uh, without knowing the details of what is it you're doing, I would encourage you to continue to get people to share their thoughts, their ideas, their feelings um, in that, that big community project by individual posts, if, that's, if this is an online community, um, by individual posts, by sharing their opinion, um, you know, just, just really using, using the power of a multitude of voices to create that engagement level. Because as Paul and I were, were in groups together, and as Paula can attest to, you have to have everybody talking, or at least a good chunk of people talking, in order to create engagement. If you've got one person talking, like in this, you know, in the Marketing Wizards Inner Circle, for example, you guys, right now it's just me doing a lot of talking. My hope is that over time, we'll be able to engage the entire community, or at least a lot of them, so to be talking and helping each other. Um, but that requires, you know, people to post, post their wins, post things that they've done successfully, you know, and you'll see more posts from me inside the group that are about that so that people are actually having a conversation. They're, they're dialoguing back and forth. So that's, to me, that's a really big thing is ask people for their opinion uh, and, and start to get a group of people talking and posting so that everybody sees that that's the culture. That's the activity, right? Uh, Paula says, I'm going to start my YouTube channel. Oh, Paula, perfect. Well, let me know, Paula, if you want any um, any help getting more eyeballs on your YouTube channel. So we've started a process with my own YouTube channel now, and the subscribers are starting to rocket upwards, which is great. Um, but this is a, you know, this is a marketing campaign process that you can start in your YouTube channel, and it really helps accelerate the growth and the volume of people. And um, my marketing company has a really cool and unique way uh, in which we do this, where we partner up with some larger influencers and that type of thing, and they start promoting your channel with theirs. So there's some cool techniques there. So Paula, you and I can chat about that when we book in that strategy session that you wanted to, uh, to talk about. So um, perfect, Paula, I will happily, happily give you some ideas around that. And the great thing about this particular service is it's very cost efficient for what you get. So it's a really cool service. Uh, got town council going. We, oh, good for you, Shanna. Ah, I just love how ambitious you are. Shanna's amazing, you guys. She's got this huge level of heart, massive heart, and a lot of ambition. So you are going to rock this planet, Shanna. So just keep doing what you're doing. I absolutely love it. Very happy and proud to have you a part of our community here. Um, okay, any other questions, you guys, before we wrap things up? Uh, okay, yeah, Paula, so if, um, 
I sent over that email, I think, Paul, that has our strategy session intake form. So if anybody would like one of those strategy sessions, by the way, for those who are watching the replay or watching live, if you'd love to connect for 40 minutes to an hour and do a strategy session with uh, with me uh, as part of our marketing team, those are things that we do for free. So if you wanna, if you wanna do a strategy call, let me know. It's a great way of, of me finding out whether what we do is a fit for you, of course, right? But it's also a great way for you to tap into um, someone else's view on things. So, you know, I've built businesses very successfully here. So uh, if you'd love a strategy call, let me know. Shanna says, yes, please. Perfect, Shanna. Well, I'll have my team message over to you via Facebook message, then um, a strategy session intake form, and we can get going on that. That'll be great. Uh, okay, you guys. So, uh, without further ado, we're at the 48 minute mark here. Wow, we did a long Q&A today. So, thank you for all the input, you guys. You've been absolutely fabulous. Uh, I hope that you got tons of value out of this. By a show of thumbs up, everybody got good value today. I hope you got something cool. Can you put something into place? Put something into place. So, let me, let me ask this question of the community while you're on here. What is one thing you can do before next Friday, before the next Q&A that we've got? Okay, so before we have our one on the 26th, those who are watching here live, what is one thing you can start doing to attract more eyeballs, more attention to what it is that you're great at? What's one thing that you can do? Put in the chat box one thing that you can do. Give me one thing. What's that one thing? What's that one thing? Don't be shy. You don't have to be shy. Paul's going to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> we already know what Paul's going to do. So Paul's got a YouTube channel going. Uh, go out and serve somewhere, Paula says. Okay, well, where's somewhere, Paula? You know what we talk about here in our Napoleon Hill Institute. Where is the somewhere, Paula? Let's get specific. What's it going to be? Glenn is going to stretch himself. Well, Glenn, how is that going to attract anybody? We're just going to watch you stretch. You're going to do it on your front lawn there, bud? How's that going to be? <laughs> Great announcement for council to post. Perfect. There we go. Shannon's got something very specific. So, Glenn, how does stretching yourself help you? And Paula, where is the somewhere you're going to serve? See, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you guys some marketing coaching while we're talking here. So, let's be specific. Where is the somewhere that Paula is going to serve? And Glenn, what type of stretch is this going to be? <laughs> what type of stretch? <coughs> stretch your market and targets. Okay, got it. Got it. All right. I hear you. And Paula, how about you? Where is that somewhere? Where is that special place that you want to go serve? <laughs> is there a, a particular spot that you can go in your community or, a, you know, somewhere I'll be in... Somewhere we'll be in... Is that Montana, MT? Is that what that is? Is that Montana? We can always go like when you have some specialized knowledge to use a Napoleon Hill term, you guys. Ah, perfect, Montana. Okay, cool. Thanks, Paul. You can always go and serve. You can always go and see if a uh, community center, you know, will let you host an event. Uh, you can always jump onto social media, guys, and click on the go live button and just start helping people. So uh, never forget that your message and your expertise is valuable. So just getting out there and sharing it has a, a significant impact on people. So never be afraid just to get out there and start serving and sharing because you never know what delivering, um, you know, a transformational experience for somebody who's listening or watching will do. You never, ever know. Right. Okay. So my friends, I'm going to rock and roll. Uh, I have a client meeting that happens in eight minutes, so I got to rock. Uh, I love you guys lots. I will chat with you uh, starting next week. And um, Shanna, I will send over a strategy session request form 
And then Paula, be sure to fill that one out because uh, I'd love to get together next week and chat and uh, help you build that phenomenal YouTube channel. All right. Ciao for now, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. It's a long weekend here in Canada, so I'm going to spend some time with my kiddos this weekend. And so I hope you have a great weekend yourself. So my friends, this has been another episode of the Marketing Wizards Inner Circle Live Q&A Friday. Uh, so go out there, you guys. Uh, I have been Michael Bridgman. You have been awesome. So go out there, enchant your audience, make magic happen, and I will see you next time. Ciao for now.